What's going on friends and welcome back to another video and if this is your first time watching one of my videos, welcome. My name is Nick Priest, I am currently a first officer on the Airbus 320 and if you do like aviation, travel and lifestyle vlogs, make sure to hit that subscribe button and you'll be the first to be notified when a new video does go live. But let's get straight into it. Today's topic, as you can see by the title, what happens on an airline pilot's check to line or line check. So a quick backstory for those that are new here. I was a second officer on the Boeing 787 for three and a half years, so just doing international trips. Obviously I had a line check on that. And now I am a first officer on the Airbus 320, so primarily doing domestic trips and occasionally a few international trips as well. So whether you're doing your line check or check to line on wide body or narrow body, basically the same, but on wide body it is only over two sectors because they are long haul international flights. So Melbourne, Honolulu, back to Melbourne, Melbourne, Bali, back to Melbourne. Your check will just be on two sectors. Whereas domestic, it will typically be four sectors because obviously they're shorter sectors. So Melbourne, Sydney, Sydney, Brisbane, Brisbane, Sydney, Sydney, Melbourne, or a variation like that, four sectors. Because on your line check, you have to be assessed as PM and PF. So pilot monitoring and pilot flying, which is why the minimum is two sectors. Because a few months ago, I just did have my check to line on the Airbus 320. I'm just gonna be talking about what typically would happen on a line check. This is a bit subjective because every check captain will ask different questions. Obviously, whatever company you're in, they will have guidelines as to what to ask. But basically on your line check, they will be assessing your SOPs, your standard operating procedures, and making sure you can fly the aircraft safely. And along the way, they will ask things like memory items. Because I cannot film in the flight deck, that is just out of my control, so unfortunately I cannot do that. I am going to try something a little bit different today. And instead of just watching me talk the whole time face to face like this, I have had an animation made, so I'm going to be talking underneath that, and then the visuals is going to go right now. So let's get into it. Just starting the day will be just like any other normal day. Walk into the crew room, print off your briefing report, and then you download your flight plan. Most companies these days are using iPads, so they're downloading a digital flight plan. You look through that, then your check captain may ask you to brief him on the flight plan for the day, may ask you some questions around the weather, no TAMs, there's an MEL for your aircraft for the day, and they typically will ask to see your medical and license as well, which is something they typically have to sign off. And then the check captain may make the decision as to what sectors you're pilot flying and pilot monitoring for the day. Then you'll both head to the aircraft, Get onto the aircraft, do your standard checks, standard procedures. And when you're pilot monitoring, the check captain may come with you on a walk around to ask you some questions while you are doing the walk around. And then going through the tech log for the aircraft as crew. A typical question a check captain may ask you is if you have an MEL, how long an MEL item lasts for, so like a category C item lasts for. Then you will do your standard pre-flight setup as PF or PM, whichever you are for the first sector. And then push back, and maybe another typical question they could ask is what is happening during the engine start sequence taxi out and maybe if you're lining up or taking off behind a heavy aircraft they may ask you what wake turbulence separation times and distances are. Take off, get to cruise and really along the way the check captain can ask you anything they want. They are the check captain after all but things without fail you will get asked on a check is memory items limitations so things like a memory item for emergency descent or an engine failure in cruise limitations it can be anything relevant obviously to your aircraft like the minimum oil quantity before you take off or something like what is the minimum and maximum fuel temperatures for the fuel for your aircraft and they may also check your system knowledge so ask you some questions about the systems in relation to your particular aircraft so maybe ask you something like how the pressurization system works or the hydraulic system and so on and so forth you kind of get the idea right then you set the fmgc up get your ipad ready for briefing brief the captain for the approach if you are the pf which you will be obviously throughout the day then do your descent, approach, making sure you also comply with the IFR speed limits and if your company has any particular speed requirements at certain altitudes, you'll also be making sure you comply with those as well. And then obviously landing the aircraft, making sure that you can land, taxi in and get back to the gate safely as pilot flying and then also as pilot monitoring depending on obviously what, what role you're doing for that sector. And then as I said at the start, if you're wide body or narrow body, obviously narrow body, you'll continue the rest of the day, do four sectors, so repeat that another three times. Uh, wide body, I guess you'll get off, spend the night there or two nights, and then fly back to your home base. But I guess that just gives kind of an overview. Um, overall, obviously they're assessing your standard operating procedures and making sure that you are safe. And then obviously asking you questions about the aircraft, and making sure you know your memory items and limitations as well. So hopefully that gives you guys a bit of an overview of what happens. There obviously is a few variables because the check captain you know, may or may not have their own particular questions that they want to ask you throughout the day, or they may even do a scenario type question as well. That is your check to line or your line check. So with the frequency of line checks, when you do complete all your training, you'll have your initial check to 
line and then the company may or may not have a follow-up line check with you three, four, five, six months after that, depending obviously on your company. And then from there, you'll have an annual line check. So one line check every year. And then you also have simulator sessions throughout the year as well. So every six months, you'll jump in the simulator for a few days. And in that, they'll be assessing things that they can't assess you on the line, like abnormal procedures, like an engine failure on takeoff, and obviously a few other things as well. But hopefully that has given you guys a bit of an overview of what will happen on a typical line check or check to line. If you do have any other questions, comment them down below and I'll be active in the comment section. And if you guys did like this video and did like the added animation, so it wasn't just me talking face to face with you guys, maybe made it a little bit more interesting. Please hit that thumbs up button for me, we would really appreciate it. And also if you guys did like this video, make sure to hit that subscribe button and there will be more similar videos coming. And I hope you guys are all keeping well and keeping safe wherever you are in the world. Things have gotten a little bit crazy here in Melbourne. We've actually gone to stage four restrictions now because we've had like a second wave, uh, obviously due to, we all know why. So we've actually gone to tougher restrictions than we had the first time this was. So a lot more businesses um, have closed down and there's a lot less reasons now to leave the house. And actually when we do leave our house, we can only stay within five kilometers of our house unless you are going to work or uh, you're a central worker. Flying wise, I am stood down again for August. I was stood up in July and then things kind of just got crazy in Australia. Borders closed between states again and flying was greatly reduced again. So I am stood down for August, but that is just a quick update on where I am at currently in my life here in Melbourne. But thank you guys all for watching. I really appreciate it and thank you all for the support. But more importantly, I hope you guys are keeping well and keeping safe and I'll see you guys next video.